if you're considering a large project, this is what the process looks like from the phone call to us actually being here to then actually doing the project. Right, this is why it's so important for us to get out on site when we're having these conversations about these projects. That drawing that you share with me um, doesn't look anything like this. Well, it, sh it actually shows the realist, like what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. But you get out here and you first see this and you're like, uh, we can do this in our sleep. Like this is a pretty gentle yeah, slope. It's, a, it's not a steep slope. Um, and th that's what you and I first said, we're like, oh, this is a piece of cake. Yeah until we really started diving into the drawing and then uh, transposing it onto the yard. When you, think, when you think right now, if I can reach seven feet right now, yeah. and you've gotta go another four feet higher than where I'm at right now, it's that's huge. insane. So, so this is 11 feet here, out over there is 17 feet yes. lower. That's, that, so to put that in context, um, that's an enormous waterfall. <laughs> 17 feet of elevation change is just crazy. So we're gonna be doing that in multiple cascades, but big cascades, which means really big boulders. Well, the challenging thing about this one is first trying to visualize all of that. Like we're underneath the driveway basically right Yeah, now, there's a parking right? area like all the way out all the way here. Out here. And all the way into the woods too, like all this way stuff going. Back, way back into there. So once you start like mentally trying to picture that and yeah. saying, all right, there's a wall that comes up clear up to the, the concrete over here yeah. and then carries all the way out into there and how high that is. I think with the, so that's challenging. Just try to visualize it. Now we've got the visual aspect of it. Once we've captured the visual side of it, then it's like, all right, we're gonna build a 17 foot high waterfall, which we've done before, but we've done 17 feet high over a hundred feet in length. Not over 40. Not over 40. Yeah. So 17 feet high with a 40 foot run is a, a daunting task. Huge undertaking. And then we've got things to consider like coming in to meet the grade against the house. We've got different levels of siding that come down. We can't have just rock work running right in there. So it's going to be changing grades from the outcropping down to meet the house. And then of course, we've got to meet up with what the future walls are going to be, which we can't see right now because <laughs> we're looking at an unfinished landscape. There's an enormous amount of work that has to happen here. Uh, before we can even get in here. You're talking gigantic retaining walls down on the, uh, the bottom side, which are upwards of 10 feet high. Yep. He's got massive amounts of ledge rock that he's got to hammer through. The landscaper's gonna be doing all that stuff. And he's actually got to hammer out and dig our reservoir before we come here. A 22 foot by 15 foot tank, four feet deep um, through bedrock. Through bedrock, yeah. So Thank God we're not dealing with that because after Spain, We were like, yeah, no more. <laughs> Being out here, and the reason we like to come out and do these site visits before we commit to anything is so we can really get a feel for all those moving parts. Because that's gonna affect the price greatly, right? Yeah, yeah. We have to figure out logistics, like this has all gotta get done, these gotta get, where are we gonna stage all of our rock? How can we get this giant machine in here? Is there room for that giant machine? Right. Um, there's just like, there's so much, there's so many things that go into building something of this magnitude. And um, I think this is where like our experience over the last 25, 30 years has allowed us to do this. This is not a project I would have tackled 10 years ago. No, this is gonna be a very, very large project. And having that site meeting today with Nate and with Brad gets everybody on the same page because he has a lot of preliminary work to do before we can come in here. We have to make sure that he, there's clarity between what we need and what he's going to accomplish yeah. before we can come back here. So he's gotta fill this thing up 17 feet. <laughs> it's got to fill it up 17 feet and then slope off enough so that we have materials to work with to actually carve in these waterfalls, pooling areas, streams, and then he's going to, have to deal with the overburden once we're finished with yeah. it. So getting all that on the table is a huge part of pulling off a big project. This is a multiple six-figure project. Yep. Um, so we don't want to miss one single detail because that could mean disaster for us as far as our business making yeah, money yeah. and also disaster for the customer with unexpected expenses. Yeah, we come out here in the spring, it's not like we have an endless window and we're, you're working back at home in Jersey or I'm back at home in Chicago and things can run an extra week. We gotta right. make sure like, 
No, we have to be we, on time. We, we get this thing finished when we say we're going to get it finished. We so be on time with this. So th these are the things that we we have these conversations on the phone. So when somebody calls us, it usually starts with they found us on YouTube because you and I have been traveling around the world the last couple of years, and it's because of the videos we have on YouTube showcasing these projects. What I want to touch on with this video in particular is kind of the steps it takes to even get us out oh. on location. Um, so it really starts with somebody stumbles upon our videos somehow, or they're watching our videos, they love these water features, and then they figure out that we do these travel projects, which are few and far between. We can only do maybe three to five a season, right? Yep, yeah, we have, uh, you've got a crazy busy business back in Jersey. Yep. I've got all, like between our retail store maintenance and construction back home in Chicago. Um, and we'll go right up through November. So I, we get December through, you know, April. Yeah. You know, and and then even through those months, we still have winter retreats and collaborations and all these other things. Working on we're, getting the business ready yeah. for the next year. So all that aside, they're starting off, they see some videos like, okay, I want to move forward with these guys. Mm -hmm. They reach out to us. It always starts with pictures and videos of the space and then some synopsis of what they want to accomplish. Yep. And our conversation is going to go into depth about like why they want to do this, what's the location like, you know, um, what's time frame on something like this, and then it's always going to come down to what's the budget for this project. Yep. Realistically, we cannot even make a project happen that's out of state or out of country for under six figures. It's impossible. We're, we're probably starting at 175, and that's a small project. That's a small project, yeah. That's a small project. Yeah. Most of the stuff we're doing when we travel is between 200 and half a million dollars. And I know that's a lot of money, but the logistically move us plus the A team that we bring with us and stay somewhere, Airbnbs, air flights, travel, all that stuff, that expense right off the bat is, is pretty large. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to couple that with sourcing the rock and the materials and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes we're talking about shipping overseas with, yep. with some of these projects. Container and loads and something yeah. like this. We're in the US, we're in Missouri. Yep. Beautiful Ozarks. We're right here on Table Rock Lake. It's gorgeous. They have this beautiful lake house that they want to really turn into their homestead for their well, family. Well, showpiece. I mean, he said he's like, I want this on magazine covers, right? Yes. And it will be. Like, I can picture this waterfall on a magazine cover. So we're in, we're going to be using, uh, it's Missouri limestone, right? Yep. To build this. This is the heart of where that comes from. You work with it quite a bit in Chicago. I don't work with it at all at home, but I've worked with it with you before. Well, you'll follow my lead. <laughs> <It'll> be... <laughs> What I like about the stuff is um, it's instantly aged. It's totally craggy and it fits together really, really well. Wow, and here it's just gonna blend in with everything we see. Because that's the right? existing, that's, the, that's indigenous rock it's here, like so just it makes popping sense. up out of the ground everywhere. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm excited to work with that stuff. Um, and I'm excited to work with this slope. I know the challenge that's ahead of us and it's starting down here. Right, part of what we do yeah. is imagine these weeds aren't here, right? <laughs> so you have to get your head around that first and then you have to really start visualizing these retaining walls, how high they're gonna be, we're gonna hold things up, how much room we actually have, like spatial alignment for our reservoir, which is gonna be 15 by 25. Yeah, like right now you're standing in the middle of the reservoir. Yeah, so this, so Nate, the landscaper, has a bit of a job to do right here. Once he gets his retaining wall in, he's going to have to unearth this thing and get us down four feet. I can tell you right now, I'm looking at ledge rock yeah. in the ground at the surface. So I know he's gonna be out here jackhammering probably for more than a day to get us the elevation that we need for this reservoir. And that's extremely important because remember Spain? Yeah. don't want to, but I remember. I don't <laughs> want a, re a repeat of Spain where we show up and then we hit this rock and it just puts the brakes on the whole job. So this is a crucial component as far as communication and then making sure that Nate can hold up his end and get, what, get us what we need. That's probably gonna involve some FaceTime videos where we're actually talking to Nate and making I sure actually, that he's I good. actually see myself, because, because it's not going out to Spain, because it's not going out to Australia, because it's not going to California, Missouri is not terribly far from me. Right. What I'll probably do before I feel comfortable bringing the, the whole team back out here is just making sure this stuff is finished. Right. I wanna put eyes on it one more time, look at, the, look at the walls, make sure we still have our access. Let me see 100 tons of stone sitting here. Yeah. Make sure that all showed up, because if we show up here, and there's a delay on rock, there's a delay on gravel, there's a delay on sand, it's gonna mess up our schedule. If this wall needed to be five feet taller or three feet taller, we don't have time to 
rebuild that wall or add to it. So 100% come back out here, make sure everything's ready for us, and then we'll schedule, schedule a time to be out here. So once we have these phone conversations and we get to the point where, okay, this is a serious project, we have a workable budget for what we're being described as the scope of work, correct? Yep. As long as we stay within that scope, we can pretty much get there. Now we're like, okay, let's schedule an on-site consultation. There are costs involved with that. There's costs to get you and I out there. We're gonna be doing a design. We're gonna be doing the site walk. We're gonna be sourcing rock and machines. Yep. And we've got to deal with flights and Airbnb and all that kind of stuff. So that alone can be expensive depending on where it's located. You're talking anywhere from 15 to 20 plus thousand dollars to do something like that. Yep. Like when we're flying halfway around the world to Australia, it's expensive just for the flights to do that. Yep. So we want to make sure that we're having a really clear conversation before we get to that point. I don't want somebody spending money on something that's going to be out of reach when we get out there. So I would feel terrible taking someone's money and not making it a reality for them. Yeah. So like you said earlier, establishing the budget yeah. is always the very first thing I do. Is this even tangible? Right. If he said he wanted to try to do this for a hundred thousand, I would say we can't, we can't touch can't, it. Can't do it. There's nothing that we can do. Right. For a hundred thousand, you've a 17 foot waterfall. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, so we establish a budget. He's got a very clear budget. We're saying we can hit it. Uh, we had to take some things out, you know, like we had to remove staircases. We had to uh, shorten the distance, yeah. like compact it a little bit more. Um, but the key is delivering something spectacular in that budget and we're all still on the same page and, and we will. Like. Having that conversation and that clarity before we start is a huge plus for us too, because we can design to a budget. Yep. Um, I know that's, uh, that can be tough for some people because they're like, I don't want to tell you how much I I'm willing to spend because then you're going to go right to it. What we can do is we can design be way beyond that and blow this thing out of the water and waste everybody's time. In reality, we have to know where we're going with this yeah. thing, right? So that, that applies oh, to any project we're looking at. You could at. turn this into a half a million dollar project. Oh, easily. Like that. Easily, like, yeah. Like, where do you stop? Right. Right? The slope just keeps going and going and going. There's another nine feet higher up that way. Like. Yep. You could keep going. We could do the staircases. You can do bridges. You can do lighting, sunken, all that stuff. sunken patios. Yep. Like it can get crazy. Yeah, real it can fast. get crazy. At this point, we've got. We already have our rock source. We know where we're getting the rock from. We've had meetings with the landscape contractor yep. as well as the homeowner. Gone over the whole scope of work. We understand what the expectation is here. Next step is we go sit down and start putting this thing on paper and get a concept down that Brad can fully see and visualize. Yep sign off on and then we're looking at a deposit and scheduling this job yep as soon so, as we get the deposit then we can then we can put a schedule together let's go get the drawing done and right. show everybody what we come up with a little more time than this <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see we're sitting in an airport um, we uh, we used every last second doing the design and all that last night so we, we sat down now when it comes to the design process we went on the job site we looked at um, the existing conditions and then we started letting the ideas flow and that's when things start to go on paper so let's kind of walk through that like what what goes through both of our minds and look like what discussion looks like when the drawing starts to happen. So I think the drawing is important really, sometimes the drawing is important for me, for you, right? So we can kind of work off of a, like a loose blueprint. Right. Um, there's no way what we're going to build looks anything like the drawing, but the drawing is super important. I think for the customer just to have something tangible to hold in their hands and kind of get an idea this is the space this is the area um, it's almost kind of like a colorful contract in a way too it's like hey this is what we're doing it keeps them excited it keeps them motivated they can share something with friends and family yeah um, but it uh, he said it best like we were there at his kitchen table and he goes so uh, I still have no idea what I'm getting right and I'm like <laughs> no <Nope. laughs> pretty much <laughs> 
And it really comes down to, this is uh, a form of art, right? What we do every day with building water features, we have the canvas, which is the yard, mm -hmm. and we have the paint, which is for us the boulders, and the, yep. the equipment is the brushes. So we are starting with an idea in our head, and the drawing helps to illustrate the idea somewhat. At least give us, like, we're, it's really about a footprint, right? Mm -hmm. We're working within this footprint. We know what our elevations are, we know what our distance is, and we know what the start and finish point is. And that's where the drawing, I think, really helps. It helps with little things too, like uh, the drawing's got a fire pit on there, right? right? There's no way I could go out there with a can of spray paint on a slope that doesn't, ex in, like- In, in the weeds like, this high. Yeah, weeds right. this high, the topography's different, things need to be flattened off. Right. I could go out there with a can of marking paint and spray paint out uh, the area of the fire pit, but it's not gonna help at all, because- Well, you and I have, we have the ability to look at things in 3D and we can mm -hmm. imagine something finished. Like we can imagine a 10 foot high wall and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. When you're having this conversation standing in front of a husband and wife, they're looking at you like, what? I, I don't see well, it. Well, most most customers, yeah. Brad seems to have some idea on space recognition and yeah. stuff. But most customers, if you tell them 15 feet, they think that's the space between me and you. Right. Or it's the space from you all the way over to the edge of the airport over yeah. here, right? It's <laughs> not 15 feet. So. When we say a 25 foot wide fire pit, 25 by, that's a huge fire pit huge, area. Yeah. And we're really designing this. Um, one thing both of us were taking into consideration is the size of his family. Yeah. It's not a big family, it's a huge family. Huge. And so he said uh, between himself and all the extended family, there's like 280 of them. <laughs> yeah, like it's and he knows every one of them. That's pretty amazing. Like. <laughs> That's a huge family, so it's super important that they have this place that people can come to and lots of people yep. and use it and, and make it so that everybody kind of enjoys themselves and the, the big fire pit's important, mm -hmm. having the big water feature where the kids can actually climb up and down these rocks, play in these pool areas, like all these things are running through our head when we're talking about putting the design into place, right? Now that we've got that, then we do our takeoff, so we look at what our scope of work is. We know we've got this huge elevation to work with. We're talking 175 tons of boulders. Yep. Now we can start putting it to paper and be like, okay, how much is this thing gonna cost? Yeah, and well, and based on and so much of the cost, like, so it's easy for us to figure out product, right? Mm -hmm. You got fabric and liner and aqua blocks and pumps and plumbing and lights and foam and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that go into the project. And there's a decent amount there. The one part, the only way we can figure out the labor is off of experience. Yeah. There's not it. formulas for it. It's like we know um, based off of experiences, based off of mistakes that we've made in the past, um, things to look out for. Like for example, on this one, yeah, we can get a giant machine down there, but it's one rock at a time. Yeah. It's not easy access. No, right? Lo logistics are difficult on a project like this, especially when you start incorporating large boulders, because large boulders take up a lot of space just in staging. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to be able to actually pick through and get the ones you want. So you can't just dump a huge pile of rocks someplace, because then you're spending the whole day digging through. Yep. So we have to really contemplate all this stuff, and that's how we formulate how long it's going to take us. And on top of that, it's putting together the team to actually build something like this. This is a, this is a very large project, and it's a high skill project. Yeah. So we need the right people. Well, fortunately for us, you and I have been doing this for over 20 years, we know the right people. So we're gonna bring in the right people to work alongside us that really can bring this thing to its full vision, which is what Brad and uh, his family are after. It was great to show him the drawing. Um, he was excited when we showed up, right? You could see light bulbs go off in his head as he continued to call me a salesperson, you know, he's like, <laughs> yeah, you keep painting the paint. You really hated that. <laughs> He's like, I just love the way you paint the picture. You just paint the picture so well. And yeah. He's like, I see how excited you get. And then, and then when we <laughs> show him the drawing, he's like, Oh my God! Like, you know, he's still excited about it. So he's he's he said he loves the process of the whole thing. He does, and uh, he's a business guy, and he yeah. loves to see like how this goes from a phone call yep. to actually going into the ground and creating this paradise in the backyard. So I love the way that he reacted when yeah. we came in and the way he's been during this whole process. Like he's super excited about like how we actually make this happen. And he's blown away by um, the vision that you and I both have by staring at a grassy hillside. Yep. And like what can be in all these parking spaces and we can picture the cars parked up there and 17 feet of elevation, which seems insurmountable to some people, but we're like, okay, we get it. So now we've got to get it from here <laughs> to here. It's like so much taller you think about it. It's like it's so just, much it's taller just, than this. I think it's as high as the ceiling, if not it's higher. higher. Yeah. So 
Long story short, he said it's a go. It's a go. We're a go with this project. This is going to happen in 2024. Um, this is a multiple six-figure project. And now, I know we, we touched on this in the beginning of the video, talking about how much like a minimum job costs to get us out here. This, by the time this is all said and done, this water feature with the rocks and equipment, we're going to be over three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, which is a, a huge amount of money. It's a huge, it's a huge amount of money. But what it takes to pull something like this off, it is expensive. Oh, you're talking one hundred seventy-five ton, like you said, one hundred seventy-five tons of stone. Uh, you know, a 30, 40,000 pound excavator. Yeah. Um, no, 40, 40 ton. 40 ton. Excavator. Esca 80,000 pound excavator. Um, you know, skid steers and dingoes. I'm going to bring a truck down with a trailer and right. everything else. And, and high level, yeah. uh, high level artists to come and, down here and you know, build this thing. Just uh, when you're taught, and we're going to be setting rocks that are, you know, five tons a piece. Yeah. Right. And this is not something that you can just teach no this is only something off of experience and we've dedicated our lives to doing this so yeah we got one more in the books awesome <laughs> so you guys will decide when you see the video from the completed project whether you think it was worth the price that's being paid to do a project like this and if you look at some of our other videos between team aquascape and atlantis water Gardens, you'll see some of the large projects brian have done traveling and uh you tell us if it's worth it. Oh, it's worth it. <laughs> that was perfect. Dun, dun, dun. If you're considering a large project, this is what the process looks like. From the phone call to us actually being here to then actually doing the project. Hopefully this helps explain some of that stuff. Head over to Team Aquascape, hit subscribe. These guys are doing an amazing job over there. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button. Love to have you come back. Check out these fun, unbelievable experiences Brian and I get to have traveling the world and creating paradise. Ha, ha, ha.